Hey guys, it's Ashley. So I'm really sorry that this took so long to get this video out, but this is going to be the first part of the Arabian series. This is Baylor. He it came to me for a short amount of time, about two weeks. And um, of course, with weather and everything, it kind of got pushed back a little further. But um, for the most part, he had um, two weeks of training in him. So we don't have, I don't have very many videos of him um, just due to me not having enough time to record and edit and all that as well as not enough space but I got all that problem all those problems fixed and so we're gonna start doing more videos but Baylor came to me basically because he needed more time under saddle um, he had been to um, two trainers prior to coming to me and both said that he was untrainable he was a big bucker and um, basically told the owner that they, she just needs to get rid of him because nobody can train this horse, which was really not the case. You know, I had him for two weeks, and he's doing awesome. Um, I just think the problem is a lot of trainers don't know how to work with Arabians because a lot of trainers think horse training is just making them tired rather than actually putting in some kind of knowledge into the horse and making them use the thinking side of their brain rather than reacting. A lot of people kind of train like the old cowboy way where they just get them really, really tired get on them and you know they didn't really teach them anything they didn't really teach them how to buck they didn't do any of that because their horse is just tired and dead so um he came to me for two weeks and we worked from the ground up and um right here I was working on catching him and he didn't want he kind of kept running away or putting his butt to me and um just really pushy and disrespectful so I just started round pinning him to get him to learn to just look in to give me two eyes and then I'll go catch him Okay, so right here, I'm actually going to start working on backing. So this is probably about day four that I've had Baylor in training, and he was just very pushy. So that looked pretty aggressive right there, but I asked him nicely, and he still kind of said, yeah, screw off. So I went from stage one all the way down to all the way up to stage 10. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to get there. So you start off by tapping the air, then you might go a little bit harder or a little bit higher. Then you might tap the rope, then you might go a little harder and go up from there. So that right there I went from air to rope really hard and aggressive and um, getting him to kind of think. And obviously it wasn't effective enough because here I am right here. You can kind of see my stick waving and he's just kind of sitting there like <laughs> you can't make me move. So in all honesty, I should have really gotten after him um, again and a lot harder but, um, you know, I didn't, so we're just going to kind of see what happens here. So there again, I'm asking him nicely. Now he's going really slow. His ears are perked up, so I do like that. But I don't like how lazy he's being. And it actually might not be you day four. It probably was like day two because of how easy I'm being on him. Um, cause day four, that would have been horrible if he was going that slow. So this has to be like day two. Okay, so I'm asking nicely, going a little harder, a little harder. He's kind of moving his feet. So that's really the bare minimum that I'm going to ask. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and see if we can find some other steps here. Let's check this one out. So just not moving. I should have whacked the crap out of him there, and I didn't. You know, and I, I rewarded way too early. He barely picked his foot up, didn't even really back up, and I rewarded it. So your biggest thing is when you're teaching the backup is you reward the slightest try, but once you start getting pickier, you need to make sure he's actually picking up his feet and actually moving with some speed and yes ma'am, no ma'am attitude. And another big thing to know too is, you know, you have to think of horses as you are their leader, their head leader and like their head mare. So when you watch horses outside, you know, the, that lead mare pins her ears back. That horse is, yes ma'am, let me get out of your way. And if they challenge her, what does she do? She turns around and kicks them and she'll run them off and bite them kind of attitude. You, by just standing there, you, you know, you're probably 100, 200 pounds um, as an adult, maybe a little bit more. Horses are 1,000-pound animals. So you going up there and you basically giving them a little tap is not really going to hurt as bad as a 1,000-pound animal kicking them. And I'm not saying go in there and just beat the crap out of your horses. I'm just saying your levels of intensity here, like you'll see I kind of get after him a little bit. Um that's all just like the lead mare you know she doesn't put up with crap and you shouldn't put up crap either however you're not going to sit here and beat your horse up you use that since you know like she'll let him come over and eat hay and everything kind of attitude but you want him to know that you're the leader so to do that you have to make him move his feet forward backward left and right and you have to kind of make him like right here he he didn't back up so i went after him i didn't hurt him i didn't whack him in the face but i got aggressive with him to say yes you will back up 
And the big thing is, too, is I'm not releasing that pressure until he actually backs up. You'll notice a lot of horses will move sideways or they'll try to um, run a circle rather than backing up. And I keep that pressure on until they give up and say, okay, let me back up and try that. Horses don't speak English. You can't just say, okay, back up now. And the horse says, oh, I know what that means. Let me back up. You have to, they're going to keep trying until they find the right answer. So you're going to have to sit there and, um, you know, keep letting them try, keep letting them try. Don't reward until they try, they get the right answer so that they learn. And they learn by that release of pressure. And it's also big to realize, you know, when I do get after him, the next go around, I don't start at that pressure. So I kind of put the pressure in kind of like a stage one to like stage 20 kind of thing. So stage one would be barely moving your stick and stage 20 would be whack and whack, 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 you know, maybe even like whacking his nose, whacking his chest. Um, so that's kind of your metric. So if you start at level 20 and, or let's, let's go a little, let's say out of one to 20, you start at level 10 and you always start at level 10 and then you only have 10 points to move up rather than the whole 20. And that's because, you know, your horse is just going to start to get dull to that. They're going to require you to really get after him and really be obvious. And the whole goal of horsemanship is you want to be able to just look at that horse and kind of tap your finger and that horse say, yes, ma'am, let me get out of your way. I'm sorry. Kind of attitude. Or you march towards it and say, oh, you need to back up a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Rather than coming in there with a stick, pull force and saying, back up. Because that's not going to look real pretty. So it's really important when you start off so really start at stage one, barely move that stick. And yeah, it might be day one, day two, but you want to start somewhere to improve it. So, you know, so that way you have enough to go up and ex ex exaggerate your um, movements. So if you always start, if you start at stage 20 and you're giving it full force, then you have nowhere to move from that and you, you know, you're just making a dull horse. And, and two, if I move that stick up, I want that horse to say, oh my gosh, I did something wrong and really back up and really put some effort in here. Like you'll watch me, sometimes I'll kind of challenge him, you know, if I feel like he's being a little lazy, then I might throw in every now and then I might say, you know what, what happens if I throw the stick up? Is he going to back up or is he going to challenge me? And if he backs up, then I release the pressure, good boy. If he doesn't, then I really get after him. And that's really just knowing that he knows level one, he wants to accept level one because level one's a lot easier. So, um, you know, a lot of owners, first time people with sticks and stuff, you know, the stick's pretty heavy. They'll lift that stick up and they'll go way ahead and that horse is like, oh my gosh, I must have done something wrong, you know. And not that you want that reaction, but you want to be able to move up to where that horse really, really tries so you're not constantly having to beat the crap out of it just to get it to move. So in all honesty, Baylor is actually more of a lazier Arabian. He's not your typical Arabian that is very sensitive and um, very reactive and unsure what's going on, high-headed, um, not necessarily crazy. Some people will call it crazy because they're not really used to Arabians, but they're just a little bit more stronger-willed, a um, lot more energy in them, um, very reactive. You know, you barely move your arm and they notice it. They're snorting and taking off running kind of attitude. And um, he's a little bit more calmer, and it could be because he's older and he might be kind of used to He's had other trainers with him. You know, they probably worked on different things. He's using the thinking side of the brain. His main problem was that he was just very pushy. And, um, you know, he never had enough time in the saddle. He didn't have enough time on groundwork, kind of things like that. So it's really important, especially with Arabians um, and really all horses in general, to um, desensitize, 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 especially your first couple days of training. After every sensitizing where you move the horse's feet, you need to do a desensitize to teach the horse that body language. So right there, you can kind of see he kind of freaked out a little bit. He's like, oh my gosh, that, that string's coming at me. I need to move my feet. I'm just going to relax and I'm just going to keep adding it. You know, I'm not going to go faster. I'm not going to go slower. I'm just going to do the same kind of pressure. And I'm not going to start, you know, um, like really throwing it at him, like really aggressive kind of attitude. Yeah, I want to start real nice and calm, maybe cock my leg, just kind of be like, you just need to stand there and kind of teach him, you know, the stick's not here to kill you. I'm not here to kill you. We're just moving your feet. And um, this is where you're really teaching that body language. So I'm not... I'm not being that horse with the ears pinned and saying, you better move your feet. I'm just saying, oh, yeah, you're welcome to come right here, stand right here, chill out a little bit, you know, let's have, some, let's eat some hay kind of attitude. So I really like that he's there. And you're just basically waiting for him to use that thinking side of the brain, relax a little bit, which there's five signs of that. There's lowering the head, licking the lips, cocking a leg, um, taking a deep breath, and blinking his eyes. 
And, of course, if he stands there still for 15 seconds, you know, kind of reward that. Once you've done both sides and you've done your flexing, um, that's basically all we did that day. Um, we did a couple different exercises that will be in other videos. And um, as you can see, the ground is really wet. It rained like crazy. So um, we did get behind. But we're going to have more videos coming out either every other day or once a week. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Um, Arabella is going to be the main star, so she'll be seeing hers here soon. Check out the links above. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and comment. Thank you so much for watching.